Hey, welcome back. This is a uh, Pi Quarter TR109 update two, update, th it's an update of some kind. It's been a little while since my last video. Um, so I thought I would uh, show you what's been going on with this thing. There's quite a few upgrades, quite a few new additions and some software changes. Uh, so I'd like to get into those. Let's take a look. So right off the bat, you may have noticed quite an improvement in performance. And a big reason for that is that the TR109 now uses a Raspberry Pi 02W up here, as opposed to the Raspberry Pi 0W I used before. One of the big improvements is that now, because the Raspberry Pi 02W is multi-core, I can take advantage of that to do some work on the Pi Quarter. So I've broken a lot of the program out into processes, which are like threads, but actually get to utilize some of the performance of those multiple cores. And that's why you're seeing you know, an improvement, not just in the ability to draw the screen, but also in responding to button presses, which are still pretty slow, but when you compare them to the original video I made a while back, uh, it's way better. So the changes to Pi Quarter OS actually represent changes across all of my tricorders, not just the TR109. You might recall in a previous video, I made another TOS style tricorder called the TR108. And uh, uh, well, it's up on jacks right now. It's not really functional. There was a lot of problems with it. I'm hoping to revisit it. In the meantime, I've started using Blender to create a case replacement for it. Right now, it's just for me to develop some ideas for spare parts or to create a chassis for the back plane I've developed for the TR-108. But in the meantime, you know, what the hell, I'll give it away. It may not be of much use to anybody, but maybe you can use it to design your own pie quarter. I'm actually in the process of making another TR-109 uh, for a buddy of mine. And I've had some requests from people online asking for commissions to build these things. And I'm sorry, I can't. If you want to build one, the files are available online. It's all open source. Um, you can see the GitHub for PyCorder OS, which has any improvements to the software. And there's a GitHub for each individual PyCorder's hardware, where you can find, you know, KiCad files, or KiCad files if you prefer, uh, Blender files and STLs. So you should be able to use that to get a start. And to my surprise, there's actually been some people online who have built their own versions of the TR-109. And I'm just blown away to know that there's other tricorders like this out there functioning right now. Another update to PyCorder OS is that it now uses Pandas for its data management, a tool that a lot of people use for data analysis and for handling big data frames. I thought it was perfect for this. It's slower. It definitely has a performance hit because I've noticed that if the buffer gets really big, things start to slow down. It, it just gets wildly out of hand trying to get information back from Pandas that way. So for now, it trims the buffer and in the future, it's going to actually back up to disk instead of just throwing everything in a list and, you know, a list of lists. Another major improvement I'm pretty proud of is the addition of Wi-Fi stumbling. Now you can war drive with your Pi quarter and you can see that it's showing the current uh, strongest SSID it can detect with some information and a graph of signal strength over time. But we can go into another screen, which will represent the entire band of Wi-Fi SSIDs and display them. So you can see here, we're detecting the strongest signal, which is Stardust Main, my Wi-Fi router. And then you can also see there's some overlapping items. And this little indicator here tells you there's six overlapping Wi-Fi um, access points on this frequency. So this is a good tool to see whether or not your router is you know, being stepped on by other routers, what's nearby, what could be causing the most interference. So this is actually a pretty cool tool and we get it for free. You don't even need a sensor array. You could plug in a Pi quarter and uh, have no sensors installed and you get this for free. So that's pretty cool. You can see there's also a list of all of the SSIDs it's detected. Well, not all of them, all that it can fit on screen and uh, you know, uh, signal strength and they're arranged by signal strength. So this is a new sort of element of the Pi quarter that I want to build on because it's it's easy and it's cool and immediately accessible. Sort of get an idea of what the landscape of Wi-Fi uh, signals is around you. It's, it's an interesting thing to walk around your block with and see all the different Wi-Fi networks. And I hope to add more statistics, 
When we get a GPS on here, I'd like to try like signal trilateration so it can actually detect the location of those signals maybe. I thought about doing some penetration testing stuff, but you know, I think I'm gonna stay away from that. I don't understand it well enough and uh, I'd rather not make a tool that could be used for nefarious purposes. So just like before, you can go through all of the uh, graphed items individually or see them all as an overlay together. And you can see it's quite responsive now on the graph screen, nothing like it was before. It's actually kind of usable, which is nice. And uh, it gets a pretty okay battery life. I got, I tested it at about uh, one and a half hours screen on time of just you know running the sensors and sitting there drawing to screen. So I was pretty impressed with that. I figured it would never be that good. It's got a thousand milliamp hour battery in here. So, you know, what are you gonna do? I've also made improvements to the thermal camera, which I'll show you now. And uh, I, I got rid of the old eight by eight pixel display. Um, and what I'm doing is I actually stole from Adafruit's website, uh, a script that lets you interpolate the results. So you can see now pretty slow, but you can see it looks much higher resolution now. And I used a color palette that's a little closer to an Elkar's palette. And this all still works great. It's still really slow. I'm gonna work on that, try and get this down to, you know, maybe a frame a second, that'd be nice. I think the array is capable of something like 15 frames a second. So, you know, it should be doable. It's really all just in the draw routine to make this pretty fancy display. Um, it's not very fast and you know, it's Python. There has been some hardware changes in terms of the shell. I've added some features like I was having problems with the capacitive touchpads just being tape. So I switched to a Cricut cut copper tape that my buddy did for me. He's got a couple Cricuts and, and he, he ran them off and he's getting a pie quarter uh, that are gonna be using his capacitive touchpads. Uh, this one includes uh, some new capacitive touchpads up top and around here, but it's mostly the same design. But those wires need to be channeled properly so that there's no crosstalk. So I've actually added a separated chase space down the side of the pie quarter here um, for those wires to go through on the new models. And they haven't really been tested yet, but it seems to work okay. As I said, library is just the settings button now, but you know, like the power button activates a power down frame. Uh, eventually, if we get there, come on, baby, there it goes. And you know, you can power down the device that way. You know, F1 and F2 data here changes the mode, but I think I'm gonna make that internal and external. So, you know, Geo, which brings up all of my EM scanning stuff, right? Dominant transceiver, um, and what's the other one called? EM channel analysis. Uh, and of course, just, you know, the list, which I call, uh, what do I call it? What do I call a pie quarter? Come on, baby. You can see it really, it still struggles with some stuff, right? So like things have gotten better, but it's not perfect yet. Oh, I also added a nice little uh, master systems display field because I figured, you know, everybody likes those. So if you go into settings and you press the F2 button, you get a nice little master systems display. It tells you what your IP is, tells you what your host name is, how many sensors are on board. And I'm gonna keep adding data to that. I'd love to have little call outs here, like on, you know, an Acutogram MSD. But you know, being Star Trek and Elkars, it has to have a master systems display. But it always bothered me in the show when they were taking their tricorders into like, yeah, you know, stealth locations, civilizations that were pre-warp or pre-industrial and they didn't want, you know, to show them that they had tricorders. They always left the sound on, which I've allowed you to turn off. And, uh, oh, is it gonna skip? And you can turn the LEDs off in case you wanna like, uh, you know, not be detected. So yeah, that's the video for now. That's where I'm at with the TR-109. Uh, sorry I don't have much more to show you. I wanted to get something out. Lots of people have been asking me what the status of this project is, if I've done anything more with it. And yeah, the answer is yeah. There's been lots of software changes recently and uh, fix-ups and just trying to get things to be a little more concise and modular so I can make changes more easily in the future as I learn more as I add functionality. But for now, I'm pretty happy with performance as is. It's not amazing, but you know, does the business for a little prop replica that also works as a sensor device. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, keep watching this space for more updates to this project. Thanks very much, so long.